right, so let's go through a, the answers to a couple of the review questions that were answered for us based on what we're on. So um, the first one is this. So we have um, two unequal charges, the positive, positive small charge over here and a negative large charge over here. Um, and we are looking for where there is um, an electric field of zero. So we're looking in this range here, in that range here, threes, or four. Um, so let's start in the middle. So in the middle between these two charges, um, I'll say that I'm here. I'm going to say what direction is the electric field. Um, we know it points away from positive charges, so due to the presence of the positive charge, my electric field should point to the right. I also know um, that E is a plus. I also know that it points towards negative charges, so I'll put my E minus there. So I, I have a two electric field vectors, one due to the positive charge and one due to the negative charge. Both of them point to the right. They will never cancel each other out. This is going to be true everywhere between the two charges. The electric field is going to point to the right. So B and C can't be. Um, now, that's not going to be the case outside the charges. So over here, I have that electric field points away from the negative charge, so my E minus will point to the right, and electric field points toward the positive charge, so um, my E plus will be to the left. Now these do cancel each other out, they are opposite from each other, but I haven't paid any attention yet to how long I drew my vectors. Alright, so um, I think maybe it's helpful here to just look at what the equation is for the strength of the electric field. So we see that electric field is strong when we are near a large charge, so that will make my arrow be big, and it's also strong when this distance is small. So we have a strong electric field when we are close to a large charge. And we have a weak electric field when we are far from a small charge. Um, so right now we have a big charge and a little charge, and we also have some distances. And what we'd like to do in order to have these two be equal and cancel each other out, we'd like to kind of be close to a little charge or far away from a big charge. We'll say that again, okay? so. Um, E is big or close to big charge. Okay, but if we want these to be the same length, we don't want E to be super big or super small. We want it to be somewhere in between. So we want to either be close to a small charge or far from a big charge in order to have a chance of having these things cancel each other out. So here, we are close to a big charge. That's close to a big charge. So no matter what we do, let's draw it that way, my negative E vector is going to be longer than my E plus vector, because on this side, between Y and Z, I am close to a big charge. That's a big E vector. So this will never work. These will never exactly cancel each other out. Now if I move to the other side, over here, I can have, again, that my E's will point in opposite directions. So E plus is going to point away from the positive charge, so it will point to the left. And E minus will point toward the negative charge, so it will point to the right. And now, we are close to the small charge, just like what we wanted to do. And this here is far from a negative charge. So we sort of have these two competing effects where um, at some point to the left of this small charge, we'll find a spot where they're going to cancel each other out. So that's our, that's 